Whoa, well, what's up? It is a Tuesday night, and uh, I think I got my internet fixed. And uh, long story short, went to work. They say, hey, bait man, we ain't got no windows. You don't want to take the night off. And I said, yeah, I'm going to take the night off, and uh, I'm going to hop on the YouTubes because it has been a while since I've been on here. So, uh, obviously, uh, my beard's gotten long, my unibrow has just gotten totally out of control. So, I'm here on the YouTubes, and uh, we're going to we're gonna stream for a while. However long you guys want to uh, um, stream tonight, this thing's working. There we go. Got Dick Duckett in here, my, my brother from MLF. What's up, Kyle Millett? White Whale Fishing, I am here. Family is well, so I'm sure you see the title. You know, I'm not into clickbait. Uh, and I just want to explain some things. Uh, well, why I basically quit YouTube, and I've got a big box of Six Cent stuff. I've got some new swim baits I'm going to show you guys. And uh, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk tackle how long you guys want to. Uh, we'll talk everything else that's going on in the world. Uh, but uh, I'll just uh, cut to the BS and uh, hopefully you guys had a great 4th of July mine was pretty fantastic uh, hung out with the family saw some fireworks and uh, yeah had a couple of days off from work and got lucky didn't have to work tonight so we'll see uh, and unfortunately if the good and the bad is if work continues to kind of be slow uh, you'll see a lot more of me on YouTube. Uh, so, long story short, number one, I've had the worst internet issues in a long time. Like you, like even when I'm streaming like by myself, like I still uh, have been having some laggy internet. And it might be laggy tonight. I actually asked Darren, he's fishing, if. Uh, he wanted to uh, join me tonight because I think of Darian quite a bit and he's a good dude and uh, he's kind of been with the same struggles I have balancing a business uh, and YouTube and stuff like that so uh, long story my internet had been messing up and I was trying to stream from my computer I could get it to work from my phone a little bit but uh, it, you know the quality wasn't what I wanted so got really frustrated um, and just kind of gave up there for a bit. So, what's up, Chris Morrow? Uh, my dude, man, I'm ready for some Tennessee football, which will be great for me uh, because I'll be even more fired up and upset every Saturday night. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, Darian says he would love to join in, not tonight. He's balls deep in spreadsheets. Uh, so, shout out to Darian is fishing, guys, his tea company. I know people joke about it, but it's. I'm really proud of him for being such a hustler and grinder, and uh, I always like to support those people. Uh, also, shout out to my man Justin Royal Fishing, dude got a viral video going right now. So uh, I didn't talk to Kyle last night. Kyle's pissed, like Kyle's really pissed. He wants a revenue cut, Royal, just so you know. But uh, so anyway, I got really frustrated with internet and YouTube, and. Um, if you guys didn't know I think I've talked about it before I've been basically renting to own my house for about four years now and um, the times come is got to make a decision to either keep find another place to rent or buy the house which I love the house everything and uh, man uh, took some good effort and uh, so closing on the house next Friday, and I'm really, really excited. And I want you guys to know that I really appreciate everybody that watches the stream, has made a donation, who's commented on Instagram, anything. Uh, it helps. And uh, without the supporters and you guys, and without Six Cents and Spot Sticker Baits and just tons of people in the industry, don't know if I could have made it happen. Because man, uh, you know, five, six years ago. Uh, I was poor. I'm still poor. But, uh, you know, I was worried, man, what am I going to do with all this freaking tackle if I, I have to move again? You can't find a bait room in every house. So, uh, I'm really excited about uh, the house. So, I had to do some updating and 
tweak some things and whatnot because you know anytime a place goes for appraisal and I got to thank my buddy Chad who basically gave me the opportunity to rent on this house it's in great subdivision close to the lake but guys we're gonna have to upgrade this bait room or figure out something because uh, I'm gonna spin the webcam look at this disaster I've got over here this is like this is going out to my garage this is rods ain't got a good place for that it's just and then back over here in the swim bait aisle yeah i see i got boxes there. there's my water heater vince seven with the 20 dollar make you holler vince i appreciate you bud i'm putting you together a little special six cents uh sack a little bateman remix maybe uh since you were the last guy to drop a 50 dollar make you holler and um uh, I can't even turn this around to see the soft plastics. Maybe I can turn the webcam. If it, all this is, this wall here, it's all soft plastics. It goes like 10 foot high. And, yeah. Ooh, now my webcam's all jacked up. Let me fix this thing before we get. There's all rainy moss up here. Oop. Let me, let me knock one of those alert boxes off here. I'm gonna get rid of that one. Yeah, we'll move this guy. Move old Randy. But anyway, stoked to be with you guys tonight. We're gonna uh, unbox some six cent stuff. We're going to uh, we're gonna talk some fishing. I want to answer your questions the best I can. I've actually been fishing. That's the thing. So let me get this shared off to Facebook really quick. I know some of you guys don't do Facebook, but. Retro Bass and Dude has been killing. I've loved the videos, man. Uh, hopefully, all guys got to see uh, the video with all those big O's, man. That was sick. And the dude went out and found some ringworms. Golly, that was the biggest freaking bug I've ever seen in my life. God, where's it at? Oh, my God. Holy shit. Golly. That is a giant bug. It's freaking Mothra off Godzilla. It is huge. I don't want a part of it. Get out of this bait room, please. Holy cow. I don't know what that is. I'm scared. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm scared. Whew. Holy cow. Dude, that thing is bigger than a flipping jig. Uh, whew. Um, yeah. I'm trying to stay collected here. Let me see if I can get this thing shared up to Facebook. Usually it works. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. And uh, my heart is beating 5,000 miles an hour. It is hard to talk tackle when you got uh, freaking. That's like, I don't think it was a bee or a hornet. Like, you know, in, at night, you get those little bugs. I may have to shut my door. I'm kind of worried to shut the door, though, because if it's in here, my wife will tell you I do not like giant bugs. Oh, God. So I can barely move around this bait room as it is. Well. Nope. All right. Woo. Oh, golly, I got boxes and boxes down here. I'm trying to get this get this thing a little bit straighter. I hate it that's laying. It is hotter than a $2 pistol up in the bait room, too. So one thing I'm going to add, I'm going to add some more ventilation and AC up here because I've been pouring a lot of jigs. So uh, I'm not sure I'm going to have to work overtime Thursday night. So uh, sometime this week, I'm going to draw... For the barking spiders man i've made up so many jigs i put a new hook put a new owner needlepoint hook uh and i'm loving that dude molds man so all right let me put let me let me try to share this thing here Guys, I can barely type. Like, I'm afraid if I ever went, like, hung out with Colin and Jay, 
that I may not make it back. So, DW holding the spot sticker, Bateman Shad had hostage. All right, so guys, if you don't know, if you order from Tackle Warehouse, you got to if you need it quick, you got to put that two day shipping on it. I know it's like eleven or twelve bucks, but you'll get your stuff very very fast. Uh, I know it's cheaper to free, but I need to order some stuff myself. Not that I really need anything, but I like to have the latest, newest stuff. But we got, but add that two-day shipping. It's not as cheap as it was, but I'd rather get my stuff quick. Uh, and but Barry, I apologize. And you can also always order the Baitman special from uh, Spot Sticker Baits. But it was pretty cool when I seen the What's New at Tackle Warehouse video, and there it was the Baitman special spinner bait from Spot Sticker and uh gave me some pretty good love on that thing so cole i have not but uh i'm gonna order it secretly for bateman jr he loves the pokemon so that's another thing bateman jr is all up in the pokemons right now he is like trying to get a charizard you know whatever Omni is good people. They just don't carry the stock that Tackle Warehouse does. And I'm just going to be really honest. I'm a Tackle Warehouse affiliate. So uh, they were nice enough to hook me up with that. So uh, I don't want to promote anybody else. Um, but I also want people to get their baits. So uh, there's lots of good options out there. If you can't find what you're looking for at Tackle Warehouse, go to Omnia. Uh, there's Land Big Fish. Uh, and a lot of manufacturers now are going direct sales so and always six cents fishing you're going to order six cents go to their website use my code baitman get your 10 percent off and uh then go to tackle warehouse so or wherever just got into flipping didn't like the prawn at first now it's the only thing i flip definitely daily so here's the deal a lot of guys go man i got the prawn it's got no action and uh the problem about the prawn Somebody just somebody just texted me. The thing about the prawn is uh, uh, it's a beaver style bait. Beaver style baits really don't have any action. When they fall and you flip, it's meant to just fall straight and a glide. Uh, and some people like that. I love it personally in the spring. I'm going to flip a beaver bait 90% of the time. Uh, but then there's guys who want action. They want something like a crawl. So that I tell you, go to stroke or crawl. Really good bait that's got a beaver profile and it's got a lot of action is Big Bites Fighting Frog. That's one of the best beaver action baits out there. The uh, spicy beaver is really good too, but that fighting frog, there's something special about that bait. It gets a lot of bites. And you can Carolina rig it. It's a really good Carolina rig. So, But we're all here for the baits. Enough about me and everything. But if you want to get caught up on why I quit YouTube and go back to the beginning, I'll cover it real quick. Um, is, dude, I just got really busy and I'm buying this house, all that stuff. And I'm a family guy, family's going to be first. Uh, YouTube, obviously, going to be second. And uh, that's just always going to be my priority. Uh, and, you know, I got to work too. Uh, I'd love to do YouTube full time, just not going to happen right now. But hey, we'll see. After the house, let's see about getting a bass boat here in the next couple years. Maybe we we'll get something else. So, hey, no problem, fat guy bassing anytime. You know, I appreciate the guys at the six. Uh, they always supporting the channel and stuff, and uh, they've got a lot of cool things out. You know, I made a post uh, here on Instagram. If you haven't tried out any of their hooks, I've actually been using their jugular 4 aught worm hook a lot, and it is awesome. I've always been a fan of the owner Z neck, but you can you can get this little. There's some other special goodies in here a lot of people don't know about too, but you can order this like hook sack. Like don't hook your sack, but this is a sack full of hooks, and you basically got your drop shot. Your drop shot, your wacky hooks, flipping hooks, jugulars, the stout EWG, which is a really good hook. There's that jugular, man. I think it's wrong hand. That jugular hook right there, four out, that's the jam. Ridge worm, dude, you can put in creature baits. I've been throwing the hog walla. 
So this is like fifty dollars hooks. You get it for thirty four bucks if you use the Bateman code. You're saved three forty. You're getting it for thirty bucks. Uh, I broke it down. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're getting about thirteen to fourteen packs of hooks in this. You're really paying like two bucks a pack. It's pretty juicy. Plus you get a little mini sack. Yes, never hook your sack. Uh, Justin Royal about took mine out in Texas, but anyway. Uh, yeah, dude, uh, appreciate it, uh, McVeigh. Uh, you know, you do have to pay a little extra if you want it fast. It's just a state of shipping right now, and you know, I, I also work in manufacturing, and it's just not tackle, man. We're we're it's taking forever for parts to get to our place and stuff like that. But you know, Uncle Joe will save us. I got faith. Got faith. Not a big politics guy. Uncle Joe's going to take care of us. But a lot of guys don't know about this. And I'm glad uh, Father Zach sent me these. This is the Six Cents Premium Gyro Swivel. So, you Carolina rig guys, drop shot guys, uh, great for putting a leaders on for your flushes and stuff to get that line twist out. Sometimes I do recommend guys sometimes throwing a, a, a soft jerk bait. Get the line twist out, put you a little swivel. So they got several several sizes here. They got a five, a six, a four, and a three, seven. So actually in swivels, the higher the number, like an eight is small. Five is bigger than an eight. So they have these. So make sure you check those out if you ever need some swivels. They're high quality. They're very similar to a spro swivel. Alright. So enough about six cents for the moment. Yeah, Grandpa Joe. I make fun of them all. You know, I really don't care who you vote for. Uh, that's your decision. Just don't complain when they suck. So, anyway, I got some new baits in. I got some swim baits. I've been hunting for for this one for quite a while. This is a KGB Chad Shad. Oh yeah, look at that bad song bitch right there. I'd like to see Boyd Duckett knock that thing off. Just kidding, Boyd. Don't do it. It's time to quit knocking off baits. Hell, it's time to start paying your anglers on the BPT. Ooh, did I just say that? I don't really want to wait a month to be paid. Do you guys like to be wait a month to get paid? Well, that's the rumor I've heard about the BPT is some of these guys are waiting a long time to get paid. So, anyway, just a rumor. I didn't start it. It's out there. But anyway, that is uh, by Kevin Brightwell, KGB Swimmates. That is the Chad Shad. That's a resin bait. Man, it looks good on that webcam, but y'all y'all look at that color. A little purple, a little bit of gold, that big tail. This is an extra slow sink, so it is made to rip near the top of the water. This is what I would like to call a you know, tactical bass cement, real popular. I agree with them. A cover glide, something you're going to throw around lay downs over the tops of stump. High, high in the water column, maybe rip wrap. Really sweet bait. This is about seven inches. I really like this bait. I've thrown a little bit in the pond. There's swim videos all out there. Uh, I'll link his website. What he does on YouTube, he'll do a little live stream on YouTube before he drops baits. Uh, and you can order there. Now, I'd, I'm not going to lie, I had to use some of my Joe, Uncle Joe money. $150 on that dude right there. That's probably one of the more expensive baits. Uh, but I actually sold a Piz swim bait, and I think the Piz baits are really cool. They do catch fish. Uh, I had a Piz right crank. It just didn't feel right to me. Like, nothing against the bait, um, but I fished it a little bit, threw it in my pool some. It just what I'm not a big crank down guy. So, a big thing in swim baits is the crank down style. Um, but. Uh, I, um, I, I'm like, man, if I'm going to throw a big swim bait that cranks down, I'll just throw a crank bait. So that's how I feel. But Chad Shad was like number one on my hit list. Got that guy. I'm really excited about this guy in the fall. Uh, cause I really feel like Kentucky Lake is kind of getting to where a fall, it's kind of becoming a fall fishery, but man, the detail on this bait's really, really, really good. It's not super heavy. You wouldn't have to have a real specialized swim bait 
equipment to throw this guy right here. Uh, Brandon, good question on the six inch glide. Uh, I would look for possibly end of July or into August. Uh, but if you show your clown, if if you will take a picture of you in a clown suit, uh, six cents will speed that up for you. You just send a picture of you in a clown suit to the six cents website. Yeah, Kyle, I hear it's killer. Don G, thoughts on the tackle uh, kick knocker top water? I think you're talking about the good pecker. I would have called it the good wood, but uh, anyway, it's kind of it's basically a vixen or kick knocker, but it's got a little blade in the middle, um, which is really cool. I definitely would like to throw that thing. I think it would actually make some crazy noise as well as get that flash. Uh, the only thing is I like a middle hook. I like three hooks on a walking bait. So essentially take that out. Um, but you know, if a fish is coming up to bust that blade, it's probably going to get, get hooked. Um, definitely cool. The only thing I'll say about Tekel, I really like their stuff, but it seems like their new stuff, it's always just a slight modification to an existing model. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, I'd like to see some newer stuff. Uh, definitely like their stuff, but, and you kind of see that across the board. We got iCast coming up. I'm going to have to do an iCast special stream and the best and the worst that I've seen so far. Uh, it looks like Berkeley is got got some cool stuff. Uh, Strike King, uh, a lot of my guys at Strike King, I want to see something new. Just throwing a knocker and everything's kind of lazy, you know? But if people are buying it, uh, that's a different story. Uh, we got uh, loose combos, kicking their bass combos, come out with them, didn't even test them. So. Yeah, so I'd love to go over the Bassmaster Best iCast preview stuff. Um, and I'll be honest, man, I've been so many times. I think iCast would better to be virtual tours of stuff, uh, kind of like it was. And I think that's one thing you're going to learn through the scandemic, pandemic. I mean, COVID was real. I had it. But I think you'll realize you don't have to do these big trade shows and cram all these people in here. And I don't want to stand around for six hours to get a... The, look at the next live target bait it's going to be in the discount band by the next iCast feed it through us for digital media make it interactive do some live streaming things for each of these companies where people can ask questions and and eyeball it I would love to see product ready available once it's shown to the public be able to purchase you know what I mean uh, but you know here's what I worry about iCast coming up this year you're gonna see all this cool new stuff and then it's gonna be the next iCast before it comes in because of all the supply chain issues uh, and things in the fishing industry. I was just talking to Mike Buka today or yesterday, and we're both really busy. And by the way, Mike and I are good. Uh, I got some really good news uh, for you guys as well uh, on the Bullshad site. And Mike's a dude, it's, you know, I'm scratching to find hooks and split rings and swivels right now. It's tough. So. Who do you think is the best local topwater fisherman on Kentucky Barkley? Well, that is, when he's here, that is without a doubt, Brent Anderson is really, Brent is one of the best topwater guys I know. I'll tell you a sneaky uh, topwater fisherman uh, is Austin Brown. And Austin has won two boats uh, in the last four years, uh, supposedly on this exact bait right here. And I know he throws another topwater bait. But Austin's a really good topwater fisherman. Brandon Hunter's good, too. Um, and I'll be honest, back in the day, I would say I was as good as most of the guys, maybe Sands Brent, because I threw it way too much. But uh, if y'all been peeping my Instagram story, I'll toss this guy, 4th of July night. That's a splashback 70 in the Black Magic. Man, it didn't take me long. I had one on it. Um, so... Kentucky lakes are really transitioning to kind of a topwater lake, especially in the summer. I caught four fish off laydowns, like no problem. So, yeah, thirteen fishing. That's classic. They always release new rods and reels, and it's the next year before you can get them. I want to see people when it's ready to go. This one thing I'll give Strike King a lot of times when their stuff is unveiled at the Classic or ICAST, you can go buy it. And I think Mega Bass is very similar like that. A lot, uh, Missile Baits is very good about that. So, what's up, George Jordan? 
Uh, Jared Hinkle, you have any clue why the Baca price doubled after Buka took over making them? Honestly, it's making a lot of customers turn away from the Baca after the price range. All right, Jared. So I'll uh, I'll answer that really quick. I don't know about the pricing, but what he's talking about. Uh, if you guys didn't know, if y'all seen this, this is a a, a Baca uh, burrito from Burrito Bates. So basically, uh, what's happened? Um, Mike and Gail, this is Matt Lures. Check that guy out. We'll link that in the description. We'll talk about it here in a minute. So basically, what's happened? And I'll link Mike's website. It's him and Gail Ratcliffe, the owner of Burrito Baits, trying to figure out a better way to drop more baits. And they collaborated. Uh, Mike's helping make more. This is a soft swim bait. This is about two and a quarter ounces, maybe two and a half ounces. It's really heavy. You can see the lead down in here. It's made to basically stroke, which rip off the bottom, let it fall, or creep really, really slow. So now you can get these on Mike's website. He's got he's able to ship faster and put out more inventory. Where Gal can just make the bait, send them to Mike, or, or however they're doing it. And so there was a price in, increase. Um, and here's the thing: these are made out of silicone. These are not a plastic all bait. They're made out of silicone. The price of that is a lot more expensive. I'm gonna tell you guys the price of hooks, especially these big swim bait like hooks. Is went up the price of lead so there is an increase but it is about fifteen dollars more but they're able to drop ten times the amount of baits so all right so um, I got some questions on the new six cent swim bait the one I posted on Instagram I got in trouble for that I'm not allowed to uh, no hard feelings. I didn't realize uh, when Six Sense posted that, I thought, well, huh, I guess I can release my photos. And they were like, dude, that was awesome, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that again. And I was like, yo, I'm just trying to help out. And they're like, no, no, the photo was great. Uh, but we have no ETA when that's coming in. So the only thing we can do is say soon. And I was like, okay. So, uh, Got you a nice 24 hour tease, but it's a really good swim bait. Tested OH Ivy. Uh, it's basically built around the hook. I know people say, well, it looks like the 13 fishing swim bait. Man, if I could show you a picture again, which I can't, I can put them side by side. There's a whole lot of differences in them, but the hook fits a lot better and it's a little bit, it's a little bit more durable. So. Dude, JSJ uh, makes great stuff, man. Great stuff. Matter of fact, I got one in my cart, Tackle Warehouse. Um, let's see. Good question. Uh, this is true. Nick Nick makes a good question. There are so many baits released to ICAST, they get forgotten because they don't hit the stores for over six months. And, and also, not every bait gets coverage in Bassmaster Magazine. I will say... Whatever your feelings about wire to fish are, which I, I'm fine with them. Jason's a great guy. I just seen Jason Seelock the other day. I'd love to get him on a stream. We'll work on that. Um, wire to fish literally puts about every product from iCast in their big write-up. And so shout out to them because that is work. It's real work. Um, uh, Will, why do you think more pros come from the Chick Gunnerville side of the TVA instead of Pickwick in Kentucky? Uh Personally, I think that's because there's more areas to fish. If you live uh, Gunnersville, you can fish Gunnersville, Chick, Nickajack, and then you can fish the Coosa River all within four or five hours of each other. You live up here, Kentucky Lake, you're pretty limited uh, in a five-hour radius, and most guys aren't going to drive to Indiana to go fishing. There's some great fishing in Indiana, no doubt, in Illinois. Uh, but, you know, a lot of Illinois lake are horsepower lim limited, so... Yes, Nick, I think that's going to happen. So, Yeah, uh, I would like to see the price on the burrito baits be a little bit down. I'm not going to complain about it too much, but uh, it, they are dropping on the Bullshad website. Um, so you, Mike will make a post in Swimbait Universe or on his Bullshad page, and you can just uh, go there. He usually posts about five minutes before they drop. Uh, but he's got a new website coming out. I've kind of helped him with it. 
uh, the framework. I'm on speed dial if Mike needs some extra help to make those things easier for you guys um, to buy. And uh, man, it sucks losing this $30 swim bait, but uh, it can happen. But I actually have on video somewhere. I was at OHIV and Captain Ron is catching these bass like every cast. And all of a sudden, all of our boats are real close to each other. And I'm looking at the uh, pan optics as my buddy pig control says the panty optics and there's like four great big fish into the boat so i drop a baca burrito under the boat and watch it go and the biggest dot on the whole thing starts falling this bait and i'm hopping it just right under the trolling motor and it's like it turns on it and spencer from six cents he's watching on his pan optics the dude it's going to eat it. it's going to eat it and i hop it again and it like knows and i felt the bump and I pulled up and there was no way and it just sat there and look at it and it finally turned around but it was definitely a giant fish and it was pretty cool seeing that so Charles great question what's your thoughts on the big blade chatterbait at $12.99 it's got a hand tied skirt but the bait seems a little expensive for not having a premium hook I'd have to see it uh, to be honest a lot of garage makers have been putting those big blades uh, on a chatterbait and I know Brian Thrift when he was originally throwing that he said uh um, he said that uh, you know he changed out those blades to his own bigger blade to get a different action out of it. So, what's up, Gary? Long time no see, my friend. Uh, I just want to know how long the Berkeley Power Big jig will be out of stock. Everyone will want it. Most likely twenty twenty four. I bet the jig won't be that hard. To be honest with you, that should be able to be manufactured in the U.S. What's up, Chris Haney? Yes, long time we'll see. Took me a little hiatus. Glad to be back on a Tuesday night, though. I did see the burrito colors. I'll be honest, uh, I kind of agree with you. I'd like to see more natural shad patterns. Uh, the glow-in-the-dark thing seems cool. Um, you know, not that this is real natural, but this is kind of a, you know, a Kentucky Lake deal. Chartreuse blue, chartreuse purple. Water's a little off color. You feed them something like this. Um, I like the natural stuff. Um, correct, Chris. Correct. What's up, fishing with Noah? But anyway, also got two other swim baits. My buddy uh, Hunter the Hammer. You've seen him on the channel, I'm sure. He borrowed my uh, Gangcraft Joiner Claw 148. He said, "Dude, I love the swim. It was great. Uh, I think he even put a little rash on it, which is good. But he borrowed these in like January." And I just got him back. But that's fine. He's one of my best friends. He can take anything I want to. So I, I was like, man, I really want to throw a game craft a little bit. Well, my buddy Byron over at Missile Baits. Byron, if you're watching, shout out to you, buddy. He hooked me up with the game craft 178. I think I actually showed this last time I streamed. But this is that ghost chartreuse shad. I think if you guys were watching Epic Eric on Travis's channel, he's thrown this a couple times. I love this color. I would love to have this in a deep crankbait. I think that is an amazing color. But if you've never thrown a Gancraft, it's basically the bait the S Waver was modeled after. I know everyone wants to say S Waver is original, and it is, but it was definitely inspired by Gancraft. Uh, so this has kind of got that smooth S action. It's not going to have a super wide glide like a Deps or anything like that. Just a very natural movement so excited to now have uh that 178 joint of claw i'll link that in the 148 i'll get the 148 out of the package just so you guys can see the size difference just so you can guys see the size difference. this is i think this is a traditional if i'm scared to buy a big bait i'm going to tr expensive bait the 148 is a very good buy i feel you can fish that up north on TVA likes, and then there's the 178 below it. Check out that pattern, man. It's just like, whew. We're going to get some new lights in the bait room, by the way. So that's the 148, 178. This is a really good size. This is almost like a small skipjack. Uh, that color is called USA Silver Shad. Both are slow sinking. Uh, shout out to Byron for hooking me up, man. He's a good dude. Uh, one thing I'm going to need to get, man, 
I've got to find a tiny clash. So if anybody got the hookup on a tiny clash or a clash nine, holla at your boy, because I'm looking for one or two maybe. How does it? I, I would love to get a toxic. Uh, they, they got some good stuff, man. Um, do you know? I think I'm pretty sure Caesar paints those all by a rattle can. I'd love to reach out to Caesar, have him on the stream, talk about some West Coast swim bait. So, yeah, Joe, that's a good question. It's very close to like a Matt Gizzard Shad from Mega Bass. So, um, Jared, right now I'm throwing glides on two rods. Uh, I have a 784. It's a uh, Douglas with a soft tip. It's kind of my less than two ounce bait. You know, something like I throw a 148 or maybe a. Uh, a small bull shad, and I throw my top hook, bigger swim baits on that. And then, dude, I use the Millican swim bait rod, and I really like the Millican swim bait rod. It gets everything done for me. I can throw a rig on it, I can throw a bull shad on it, I can throw glide baits on it. It's 120 bucks. Um, I'll boat flip with, with that too. So. I would love to get a tiny clash, that working class zero color. They they make a lot of baits with purple too. So, all right, I'll answer some more questions. We've got 155 guys in here tonight. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you're smashing the like button for me. Uh, we gotta get them numbers up. Uh, I'm not gonna go viral or anything time soon, but what I'm hoping to do is actually get out and sh and sh get some above instead of under the water. Just a point of view of over the top of watching several different swim baits work. I have to go get the right angle at the pond to see that, you know, and put a, like a digital line in the middle so you can see which tracks the most left to right and all that. So, what's up, Robert? We're doing good, man. Life is good. Very blessed. Um, I'll answer this question real quick and I'll talk about this bait. Uh, bait man, have you heard of anyone who has been fishing the Johnny Morris? The Johnny Morris. Uh, fishing tournament, it's nine hundred dollars a boat. I have not. I have not. So, dig duck at best northern glide glide bait. I'll be honest, Savage Gear Shine Glide in those perch colors, dude. It'd be really, really hard to beat that. And I have heard that Molex Glide is really, really good. So, I had a Wade Hogs custom painted by Brett Arter and didn't like it. Might have not been tuned right, but I'll give one another try again. There's another uh, bait that the Chungus, that one I, I really like. So it's kind of weird. There's a huge difference between like jointed baits and then like a traditional glide like this guy right here. Um, what line do you use under four ounce swim baits? Honestly, Joe, uh, I use 17 pound Sunline Assassin a whole lot. Uh, I've been throwing some braid. Uh, I know I always shame braid for big swim baits, um, but it's been working. But you got with braid, you really got to learn to cast these things. You can't like whip it out like KVD in a 5XD. You got to kind of chunk them. Uh, but if I'm starting out, I'm going 20 pounds, some kind of copolymer, whether it's P line, Iser line, anything like that. So, dude, this is. So, uh, I'm in a couple of swim bait groups uh, on Facebook, obviously, and this paperweight come out. This is custom painted by Trashy Bass Customs, and my God, this guy can paint. Uh, like, dude, I would say this is as legit as anything I've seen, and that's no offense to TK Stanley. TK is the man. TK is, is just on a different level, but there's so many good painters out there, and I never even heard of this guy. Dude, that looks like a summertime gizzard shad uh, here on Kentucky Lake. A lot of times they'll get this golden color. You could almost put this off as a hitch, almost. Looks very hitches. But anyway, in a group, just went up for raffle. I said, man, I'll try it. $10, got lucky, and I didn't have to wait three months for Vic Deep to ship it to me. Uh, but, uh, you know... You can say what you, people can say what they want about Vic and him shipping slow or not shipping. I think Vic's a good guy, an ama amazing built bait builder. 
I think maybe he might be a little over his head on the business aspect, but if you can get these on the secondhand market, the cool thing about the paperweight, it's extra slow sink. You tune it by putting heavier hooks on it. These swivel right here, but I love this bait up in the top of the water column. I've got one tied on right now. Uh, I threw it the other day. Uh, going put, I'll put owner short shank number ones on this thing right here. Should give me the right sink rate. I want to watch this bait. This is a bait I want to see visually. Uh, this is going to be a fall on Kentucky Lake, whatnot. But dude, the paperweight is not real heavy. I mean, this weighs about three ounces. Um, but I like that it's a resin bait, but it's got it's got a little squeak to it. Got a little squeak to it. Really, really like that bait, man. So was excited to get that. Got to throw some hooks on it. And uh, we're going to throw this quite a bit this fall. Actually trying to do some more fishing. So that's what new on swim baits. And somebody asked about this. I don't know if I've ever put this on the stream. Uh, Tactical Bassin talks about this. This is the Matt Lures uh, Hammer Tail Shed. And my buddy Hunter said, dude, I threw this thing a bunch. And he said, uh, I love it. He said, I liked it so good I ordered three on Tackle Warehouse. And I got to looking at it, and the dude's got it all. He's got some bunch of teeth marks up here. I don't know if y'all can see it real well. He said, man, I had a really big one on it, Chickamauga, and threw it. But uh, got that big hammer-style tail. Definitely for slow rolling. Looks like a big gizzard. And the cool thing about this bait is you can throw it in pretty shallow water. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure I've seen a video of Matt Allen, like, throwing this thing in a bush and catching them. But uh, pretty sharp hook. Lots of weight up here, but sinks pretty slow. But man, that is a big time gizzard imitator. I'd love to get some Matt Lurge bluegill as well. But that's a big bait, man. This is just one big meal. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of places to hang these baits, really. Put my burrito up here. Well, this has got, over here is gonna be like my swim bait shrine or whatnot. I'm gonna try to take all these boxes out and uh, I'm actually just going to get one of those big cabinets and fill it with these boxes so I have more room to hang stuff. And plus, I want to be able to lock up like my balsa baits and stuff like that. Dude, Ethan, I've tried. I'd like to actually talk to Tim about once every two or three weeks. Um, you know, uh, Tactical Bassins really made a living not having to collab with anybody, and I totally respect that. And I don't want it to like sound... I don't want to... You know, I don't want to like, I need to collab with Tactical Bass and get subs. If I collab, I would almost like to do it, like just go fishing with them in private like I did before. You know what I mean? Because uh, I really respect those guys. But I'd love to get them on Kentucky Lake for a day or two and just mess around with them and see if they can crack some codes here. Uh, let's see. I have not used the Sakamata Shad, David. Uh, that's on my Tackle Warehouse order. Uh, love me some soft jerk baits. Oh man. Yeah, uh, well, a good, the good thing is, Sycamore on those big glide baits, I think you're going to start seeing some more cheaper options come to the market. Um, and, and here's the deal. You know, obviously, uh, we had Ben's clown comment and all that. If guys are going to buy a $20 S waiver or a $30 six cents glide or whatever the price is going to be, and they have big success and they feel comfortable, they're going to go spend $75, $100, on a big swim bait. They may not. They may just say, hey, this is good enough for me. I don't ever, but you always get curious. Uh, and that's kind of why I got some high dollar baits because I've done really good on the lower end baits. So I'm like, yeah, it's not too much of a risk. All right. What do you use for crank baits? I, I, uh, I used to use the Loomis 896 for deep crankbaits, but man, I'm going to tell you guys right now, the deep crankbait on Kentucky Lake is like non-existent, so I pretty much don't throw a crankbait that dives deeper than 12 foot at the moment. Now, if I was going to go to Pickwick, I'm going to throw a 7-Eleven, 6 cents cloud cranker rod, a 6-3 to 1 uh, reel, and 12 pound fluorocarbon. That's pretty much my setup. Uh, I like a wider spool, so I'm just going to go with the regular Tatula. I like the 100P, even though it's a 5.5 five to 1. But in the last couple of years, I've really gotten up to at least a 6.3 to 1 gear ratio on my cranking reel. Uh, have some memories to 
I have some memories that raise the glue back to hook after fish. I got you. Got to have the mend it ready with the the mat lures. So. Do you think the jerky J scrounger on anything? I don't throw the jerky J on anything but scrounger heads. I know some guys that take the baby ones and they drop shot them. And I've heard some guys actually do use them as a soft jerk bait, but that's usually the big one. Me personally, jerky J, I'm going to put it on a scrounger, back of a chatterband bait, maybe spinner bait. What's up, Bailey over Serious Angler Podcast? Guys, Serious Angler's got one of the best podcasts. Uh, webcast out there and they need to get a bunch of views because Bailey and Andy over there work really hard they've got some of the best guests out there as well so go subscribe to their channel uh, Bateman may maybe we can get something going on this week maybe Friday night we can get a serious eye cast discussion we'll see we'll do it all on the serious angler channel or something maybe on this channel who knows dude I love the gambler 13 inch ribbon tail and plum hunter that is a awesome awesome um, bait man very underrated their plum is really good um, I don't throw a lot of gambler stuff but I love their 13 inch worm and plum it's it's a good one and they make a bluegrass color that's really good so dude I I actually been waxing my beard but I'm not gonna lie this neck beard it's hotter than Hades in here this feels like you know this is this is thicker than the mats that Mikey B Balls was flipping on YouTube live today. Like, I'm not sure his tungsten would penetrate this neck beard. It's pretty rough, so. Oh, man, the old shuttlecock. Uh, that's a great hair chig. Um, yes, Dick Duckett. Uh, make sure you guys are following my man, the other Duckett on Instagram. Uh, hilarious. Uh, there's been some great Instagram accounts lately. Um, Dick Duckett is OG. Uh, Wanahu is hilarious. Um, people get really mad over memes. Guys are just wanting to make laughs. Uh, there's another one popping up. Trill Bill Dance. I've seen him commenting, absolutely roasting in people on there. Um, but I have to be professional, so. But uh, I do get in arguments every now and then. Uh, dude, Maxent hit worms are awesome. Uh, Thomas Hines. I believe uh, McKee Outdoors just posted where he had a bunch of those in stock. So hit up Matthew McKee here on Facebook. Uh, anyway, Bateman, where can I buy Max Scent anything? If Tackle Warehouse don't have it, check out. I just dropped his name. He's a big pure fishing distributor. Get on Facebook. Uh, Google up McKee Outdoors in Maryville, Tennessee. It's worth giving him a call. He doesn't have flat worms, but I know he just got some hit worms in. Uh, check land big fish. Dude, my local academy has a pretty good selection, but it's mostly the generals, which I love the general. Dude, speaking of a bait that shouldn't get that be that popular is the new little general, Max Scent. I mean, you can cut those in half, uh, but uh, dude. Dude, thank you, St. Crest. Good to see you, man. Uh, hook up tackle, Susquehanna fishing tackle. There you go. Bailey Bailey is just dropping some tackle shops on there. Uh, you know, tackle warehouse. Obviously, it's going to be hit the hardest. They're the most popular online retailer in the world. Um, hook up tackle, carry stuff. Great people over there. Susquehanna Fishing Tackle. I believe my guys over at Scottsboro Fishing Tackle is a good one to hit up to. The Tackle Trap. The tackle Trap got in some sneak, sneak depths today. If you guys ever go into Boaz, Alabama, go to Tackle Trap, go see Spanky Lambert in town in the bait man. Say, look, Spanky's a great human being. Really like that guy. Dude, I'd love to go to Susquehanna Fishing Tackle. Uh, yeah, Omnia is a good Berkeley. Omnia is going to be stacked up with Berkeley. Um, Shout out to my boy, Matt Robertson, uh, 44tackle.com. We could do a whole stream on tackle shops. Uh, uh, the dude that owns 44 Tackle hits me up on TikTok all the time. I need to get my TikTok going. I think I'm just going to tell retail stories or something like that. So. Dude, we'd like to get Dick's brother on here, but I'm not sure he wants to hang. Uh, he might know about making truck parts, but I know about making baits. I did quit YouTube for a little bit, man. I just had to take a break. Had a lot of things going on here, Adam. Uh, we're back. 
we're, we're busting out on a Tuesday night. We got 170 viewers up in here. Love my subscribers. If you're new to the channel and you hadn't subscribed and you're watching this video, smash the subscribe button for me. We're like 200, 240 away from hitting 17,000. I'd love to get 20,000 at the end of the year, but that would require me to make more videos. And if anybody knows how to kill a YouTube channel, it is me. Uh, and shout out to Do It Molds, man. I got some, man, I got some other stuff from Do It Molds. Got some more color um, powder, man. Um, but anyway, I did watch the proper Bass and Men the other night. Uh, I thought it was funny, uh, but it didn't last long. So I text Pat, you know, I was like, yo, dude, what's up with this? Like, I'm just kind of like, Matt spilled his tungsten, Seth caught some fish, and y'all cursed a lot. What's going on? And Pat, of course, Pat is a good dude. He's like, I'm glad you watched it. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to leave you hanging. That means you want some more. And I thought about it. And I said, you know, Pat's right. I'd like to see some more of it. Uh, I'd like to see the editing cleaned up a little bit. Um, that's just me. Um, but uh, we'll see where it keeps going. As long as I'm entertained, I could care less if it's four minutes or 40 minutes. Um, uh, you know, maybe on the professional side, I'd like to see some of the. I don't mind the bleeps, but I don't. I'm not a GD person. You won't ever hear me saying that. So, uh, all right, Kevin. Best way to rig the well, uh, man. I wish I had one already rigged up, but. Bailey, I really just take this swim bait right here. This is the well. Uh, this is one of the things I've been getting in. Best way to rig this guy for me is just on a regular swim bait head. This is the well. I've been doing some damage with this guy. That's Pro Blue. I don't even know if there's many in stock right now, but one thing I like about the well is so, so soft. Um, screw lock head. Unfortunately, my tail got bent. That's all right, though. We can bend it back. Put the anytime your tail's bent in your swim bait, just dip it in, in boiling water. It doesn't even have to be boiling, just really hot. Um, but they put these in the packages where you're not supposed to bend the tails, but if you get in a hurry like me, see, they got this one cool thing with the well. It's got these little tail protectors. You can stick it over them in the package. That way you don't jack your tails up. I didn't realize that until I'd already messed all my tails up, slamming them in the package, but whatever. Um, just a really good swim bait. It's kind of like, I wish I had a spark shad handy. Uh, everyone says they're like a ripoff, but they're close, but this is a good color right here. This is Ghost Eye Smell. I'm hot as heck. My swim bait box is up here somewhere, Bailey. Uh, we're going to save that for this week. I think we're going to do a swim bait only show Saturday night, so... What about the plastic bait maker? There's a lot of us that make bait better than the store. All right, so that's a great question, Tony. With all due respect to garage plastic makers, I don't think you make most, I would say 90% of them can't hold a candle to the mass market. I think the guys that have the machines, the toolery, everything, they can get it down to a science. Um, I think they, honestly make a really good if not a better bait in the long run for a mass produced market for a small market um where you're not having to put out 10,000 orders a week yes i think a garage uh, plastic maker does a really good job the only problem is most of the stuff being poured in garages is a do it mold or uh, a, a mold a mold anybody could buy i'm not seeing a whole lot of creativity uh, buying new molds it's get on facebook in the barter groups it's like hey look at my trick worms they look just like everybody else's in different colors that's cool i definitely support those guys and by all means if that's fun and um whatnot and i'm sure those guys are making money and everything like that but the big issue uh with uh most of those guys don't pay excise tax and that's what that's why I don't want to sell any of the barking spiders. I'll just give them away on Facebook. If you guys want some, send me a DM on Instagram. I'll I'll take care of you. That's kind of be something I make for giveaways and you know whatever. I'm not messing with taxes. You know I can write off the supplies if I'm giving them away. But I there's a lot of guys being Mike Boo could tell you you don't want to mess with the IRS and they will smoke you on that excise tax. But 
you know, Tony, I'm sure your baits are really good, man. I'd love to see some sometime. Uh, you can hit me up. I'll, I'll definitely would fish with them. I just feel like if you're going to a mass market or you're going to an academy, a Bass Pro, a Tackle Warehouse, Hookup Tackle, stuff like that, there's very limited companies that are basically a garage poor company that can keep up. I mean, look what happened to Bass Tricks. They got so huge so fast that QC kind of went out of the window. Um, speaking of, what's up, Matt Luna Fishing? That's my do-it-mo guy right there. Uh, Matt's a great guy. Make sure you guys subscribe to Matt's channel. I'd love to get him out here. If y'all want some West Coast fishing, some deep clear water fishing, man, Matt's got it going on. And he likes to throw that spinnerbait. So, what's up, Hella Bass? I'm glad you joined me. I'm sure you didn't know what to do on your Saturday nights for the last month or so. Uh, uh, yes, Paul Carew used to paint a lot of stuff. Uh, he's a very talented dude, so I do like his stuff. So, all right, Nick says, "Man, I'm wondering what what in the crap Zoom quit pouring green pumpkin purple and gold and Z crawl and UV speed crawl." I'm not sure. So Zoom has got a lot of issues right now. They're not for sale. Uh, I've seen where somebody has started the rumor that Guggen Bates has bought out Zoom. That is not true. Guggen, uh, Zoom has not sold to Guggen Bates. They're not sold to Strike King. And by the way, Strike King isn't buying anybody. Um, it would have to be their parent company, which is like Rather Holdings, uh, who has all the money. They own Lou's and Strike King. Uh, so Strike King as a company is not buying other companies. Uh, and actually, Strike King pours Zoom Bates. They actually pour or rather holdings owns southern plastics who does the open pore technology that you see like the tricolor strike king tricolor zoom that comes from southern plastic the only other company that really does that is robo worm and like upton's hand pours um so whoo i got some yeah paul crew stuff is, looks good but anyway thanks again for joining hella bass and matt loan a couple of YouTube stars in here. Uh, you ought to get Ryan and Brent to get you a Bateman special in the Five Finger. Dude, I, uh, Brent has given me so many uh, Freddy Five Fingers back in the day. I've got one up here somewhere. I actually kind of think Sal the Salzy Juice is pretty close to Bateman special, um, which is cool. Uh, that that bait right there, man, there's a time and place to absolutely smoke it, and now is the time. Um, i got to get me a, a, a go, so. It is hot. All right, so let's uh, let's go through and see what I've been getting from Six Cents. A lot of guys forget about this. They do got tungsten weights, man. Uh, I loaded up last year, um, and I still got a lot left. But... Uh, my boy Ronnie Kelly, Kelly showed this, but dude, I am becoming a quick believer in the ridge worm, so I had to get some more. Uh, this is Plum Bug. Yeah. So, guys are going to ask me how I rig this. Man, I have found out that a 4 aught hook is really the best. And I'll just show you here. Let me find a 4 aught hook. And I'll show you why. And I like just the regular jugular hook. I know it's a big giant worm, and people are gonna say you need the you need a seven aught hook or you need a twelve aught specialty. No, Tony, a four aught uh, hook will get it done. So this is the ridge worm. So Albert Collins designed this, and what he says is most worms are a big body and a small tail, where this is the opposite. It's a big you know, spade, almost a ribbon-like tail and a small body. Four-aught jugular hook, super sharp. It's kind of like a cross between that uh, O'Shaughnessy style and an owner Z-neck. Simple. Imagine I got my line tied to this and my tungsten weight. I just go in about a quarter of an inch. I just stab myself, felt good. And then I'm gonna pull that in, and I take expose it right like that. Well, with that small body, you don't need a giant hook. I mean, that's a four-aught hook, and I've pretty much got the whole body covered. 
my tail is not hooked it's free to move and swim or whatnot i can swim that through a brush pile i can carolina rig that or you can throw it on a shaky head but i would watch the size of the hook uh, i probably want, want more on a five volt hook on a shaky head dude that that thing catches i think a lot of guys have kind of proven this worm does work it's definitely unique so that's the closest thing out there is like a big reaper style or uh, VNN makes a similar bait to this. I don't think it really took off very well. It's a good worm though. I like it. But dude, if you ever got a question on what color worm to order, get some shade of plum. It can be plum candy, plum bug, whatever. This is kind of a, it actually really reminds me of a color that Hugh Harville with Harville Baits used to pour called Cran Apple. And I really like this bait. So I've had it tied on quite a bit. I'm trying to, it's really hard to catch fish on Kentucky Lake right now, and a big worm is still catching them and fishing it slow. So, yes, I think you'll see the provoked deep diver come back out. I think you will see it. So, dude, I love the hog wallow. That's my go to creature bait right now. You're correct, Matt. Five aught, I think, is the biggest it can handle. I've always been a four aught guy. For some reason, I've had a lot better luck, whether it's in a big power worm or a ringworm, a monster. I feel I catch more fish with a 4 aught. Like, I hook just as many fish on a 5 aught, but I feel like I lose a few, one or two more. Whereas a 4 aught, it's just small enough to eat it. So, Dude, I love the 6 cent shaky head. Yeah, well, it is definitely becoming a stupid tube lake. Yes, um, the laminate and green pumpkin plum. Oh, what's the name of that color? It's not tramp stamp. Um, I'll bet I'll find it in here. Anyway, what else did I get? Uh, I got me some more bait bags. Uh, this, I love these things. And then I got uh, I got the large bait bags. They're like sold out of these. I've had this for like two months, by the way. That's how long I haven't been streaming. So got me two of these. And what I plan on doing with these guys is if you've seen all these swim baits out here, this is kind of going to be one bait bag of swim bait storage that I'll leave them in the box, like my Bass Tricks, my Ignite, stuff like that. Because shelf space is going to be a premium here. Uh, I'm already running out, so... This is kind of going to be swim bait storage. I can grab and go. Really like these bags, though. They're only like 12 bucks. And I like the gray. They got all kinds of crazy colors, but I, I like these. Um, they got they got two sizes of bait zip bags. I haven't had any haven't had any issues out of these, but I may not put all six cent stuff in here, but. If you saw my soft plastics wall, I really need to organize, you know, like put all my power bait in one bag, put all my missile in one bag, and or organized by style. I really like these guys. Yeah. Enough said. Bass Mafia, still love my Mafia bags. I got a great big Mafia bag, and I like that big giant one, so... I stepped on a Lego. I want to cry, Bray. I step on them all the time. I dag them kids. I messed up. So, Sycamore, how do you rig the flush? Those bags are golf shoe bags. I don't know what they are. They work. Uh, so, who wants to rig a flush? We'll rig a flush uh, right here. Pull this guy out right here. Here's the cool thing about the flush. This is a soft jerk bait. So, seen a lot of guys on the six cents forum stuff like that say you know i'm rigging the flush and they've got a half ounce swim bait head on it which would actually probably be pretty deadly on redfish but i love this color this is like a sungill color it's actually called watermelon red sunfish so you can use the ewg you can use a round bend either way all you're going to do turn the little slit toward you and you want your hook to come out right under the chin there. See that right under the chin? Under the chinny chin chin. 
And then you pull your eye down, pull it right under the chin there, and then I just push my hook right through the back. There's a little fin that separates back here. Can't see shit, but uh, and I'll push right here. And EWG is actually better, but there you go. My flush is rigged nice and straight. Let's get an EWG real quick, and I'll show you guys how it looks on EWG. And because that, that's actually one bait I prefer throwing an EWG hook on um, is a flush or a soft jerk bait. And you'll see why in just a second. I've experimented. I used to use a straight shank, owner straight shank. Uh, I just didn't get the right swimming action. Let me see if I can find a freaking hook. I know I've got a bag of hooks right here, and I can't even find a. Whew, I am sweating like a horn church, boys. Yes, you can also uh, nose hook that if you want to. Alright, EWG style right here. Again, this is the stout hook from Six Sense. If you want a flush or any other soft jerk bait to ride higher in the water column, go with a lighter wire hook. If you want to get some depth out of it, heavier wire hook, man. Just a, a trip or trip, little trick. Andy Green, $20, make you holler. Andy, thank you so much for that donation tonight, man. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, if you ever want to contribute to the channel, the best way is actually order from Tackle Warehouse using one of my links or buy some merch. You can always throw a donation my way. I don't beg for them. I'm not going to ask you for them. If you feel like it, great. Uh, so this is a 4 aught EWG hook. Same principle. Go down. It's, it's, it's a little bit easier to do it when it's right in your face and instead of showing it to a webcam. Now you see there's actually going to be more hook gap in that right there than that round bend. And the flush has a little fin back here. God, I ripped it. Oh my God, that giant bug is back. Get the hell out of here. But anyway, you see it's got a little bit more gap. And that fin kind of... Oh my God. Oh my God, it's a giant freaking beetle. Oh my god, this thing is huge. See if you guys can see this thing. Look at it crawling. Look at that beetle. Oh my god. Okay. Ah! Ah! I'm legit. I'm legit worried. Got him. Whew. Oh my God. Life decisions. Whew. Hope we don't have any bug lives matter, people. So, dude, I hadn't seen Roy in here. I think he's been fishing. But anyway, that's the difference between the EWG. And really, I would go with a 5 aught instead of a 4 aught in the flush. But very simple how to rig. Try, try your whatever hook you like. Uh, dude, I used to love the Mustang grip pins in a regular fluke. I haven't tried it in the flush, but dude, that's the biggest freaking bug I've ever seen in my life that wasn't in Canada. Whew. My wife be making fun of my ass if she knew what was going on. Whew. Those on the back of a jackhammer rock. Yeah, what's up, fishing with Gramps? Congrats on 10k subs, my man. Uh, love your streams, man. You tell it like it is. Um, dude, I I got some bug bomb. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this thing out this weekend. I'm gonna bug bomb it, and uh, I'm not gonna lie. I got a little inspiration from my man Matt Luna. I love his setup with the ambient lights in the back and face lighting. So there's gonna be a change back here. I actually kind of found me like a workbench thing, and I, I'm I'm gonna kind of do more of a workbench behind me, stream in front. Um, kind of a deal um all these baits are going to be moved around 
We'll see. It may be next year before I even do anything. So, <laughs> Dude, every time I get this thing organized, I'm like, oh, it's time to go fish tournament. So I'm just throwing stuff everywhere or whatnot. But, uh, what's up, Chief Dove? I like that name. I have not seen me in a while, dude. I kind of took a hiatus, uh, hence the title, uh, while I quit the tube. And uh, I didn't quit for good, but man, I just had a lot of things going, family stuff, gotta take care of that, so. Dude, the flush is an awesome bait. And I got a new color in here, I'll show it to you. Um, and I did actually record going, if you guys remember, I went to Lake X, the electro shocked it. I got that stuff, I'm gonna get it uh, edited. And what I'm gonna do, I went back with Bateman Jr. the same week and we caught some fish. Had some GoPro issues, but I'll throw that in there. I'll try to get that up this week. Uh, but this is a color flush that they didn't have when I first um, ordered. And uh, dude, this thing is sick. Especially if you want to put it on the back of a jackhammer. You're fishing clear water. This is called Gizzard Shad, man. Look at this guy right here. Dude, I think there's two of those bugs in here. They're like fighting each other. I'm. It, it's It's bad. Anyway, so this is the gizzard shad. So you got this pearl-like belly. It's like a brown-blue top. Let's see if you can check this out. Like a smoky color. You see that purple flake up in that thing? Purple and gold flake. Man, uh, if I lived up north and they got a lot of alewives too, could uh, mimic an alewife. Ooh, look at that. Look. Oh, when that webcam focuses. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Can't wait till we get some better light in here. But man, that that is Gizzard Shed. It's probably sold out on Six Cents. I would check Tackle Warehouse for that. I do think Omni is carrying some Six Cents. I don't know about their soft plastic, but got me a couple packs of that because I definitely needed more soft jerk baits. I've got a rack full of them. Hell, why not order more? And then uh, I thought I, and this is baby crappie. So another bait fish style pattern. Order these. It's kind of like your traditional Kitek uh, bluegill color, but they six cents calls it baby crappie. Yeah, really good here. Again, fish is a soft jerk bait. You can use it as a chatter bait trailer. You can put it on a scrounger. Really good bait. One cool thing about this bait is when it falls, it like falls on its side. Have you ever seen a minnow or it's kind of a dead minnow? Someone flips it. It doesn't just fall head down. It'll fall and kind of do this little roll thing. And man, that's just deadly. Uh, flushes are, well, I can tell you if it's salted or not. There's not a lot of salt in there, but it's got some salt. It is salt, uh, perfectly balanced. The way Casey told me he put the right amount of salt in there to have that like fall on its side deal when you stop it so I seen you out on the water fishing with someone recently on IG yeah that was my fishing partner that was this weekend I went with uh, my buddy Jeff uh, I actually not gonna lie I tried to boat flip about a 15 pound buffalo I thought it was a bass which is a dumb idea but I tried to boat flip it and blew up my rod and it actually hurt really bad when it blew up so yeah, that's very similar to Clearwater Rose. Uh, and then I got some more white uh, flushes because obviously I don't have enough. Might as well hang this stuff up instead of waiting around on it. Yeah, I got way too much stuff. Um, I'm kind of hoarding at this point. So uh, one thing we're going to do on the channel, and I got to have Hella Bass's help, is we are going to do a Bateman bait auction. Uh, here probably within the end of the month as I get this thing cleaned up. I've got a lot of zoom I've got some reaction innovations. I've got some strike king Net bait. I've got a bunch of line old stuff some crank baits some jigs. We're going to auction off some good stuff uh, We're gonna pick a charity and do like 50% uh, of 50 for me 50 for the charity uh, Basically just cover my cost to ship it out and stuff Dude, thanks, Blake. Man, uh, if you if you win that giant burrito, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Waffle-tastic there. 
So the flush and the well are different. The well is a swim bait. The flush is a soft jerk bait. Totally different uh, baits. Totally different applications. I like, obviously, I like the well better for an actual swim bait. I like the flush for soft jerk bait. Um, dude, to be honest with you guys, a fluke is a really, really good bait. Um, soft jerk bait wise, I'm going to say fluke, flush, 1A and 1B. Um, another good soft jerk bait a lot of people don't talk about is that one, the Shiver Glide. Oh my God, it's by my foot. Dude, that thing, oh, beetle, done for. Whew. Might have to check tackle warehouse. Let's see what else I got in here. Uh, been throwing the snot out of the hog walla, and uh, I don't know why. I'm just now. I got some hog wallas and baby crappie, and this is bluegill spawn. This is a really cool color. It's got a little bit of blue hue to it brown some red flake really like that guy right there so guys make sure you smash the like button uh share the video if you want to if not no big deal but the biggest thing for me is come back and comment on the video tomorrow let's get this thing some traction yes the flush works on a bladed jig man uh i actually think i got one rigged up we might get lucky here we may get lucky here yeah, looky here. I got me a little jack hammer rigged up with a thread fin shad flush. I think this color is green gizzard. And put a little flush on the back. This man, this thing's caught some fish already. This guy right here, that's a flush on the back of a jack hammer, crack hammer. If you buy them from Ronnie Kelly, they're crack hammers. But uh, for this stream, yeah, flush works really good. I actually caught several fish this spring. Um, on a green pumpkin jackhammer with the flush. There's one I've been catching fish on too. There's a, this is a jackhammer color called cold water shad. Uh, and that's just a pearl albino flush on there. So the one thing is, cause the flush isn't really solid through here. Uh, you've got to do some modifications just to get it to hang on there, but it hangs on pretty good. Um, no big deal, but I cut about. A quarter of the bait off to rig it on there but that's a JDM color cold water shad gets a little pink and gray in there um, yeah I've got a bunch of jackhammers rigged up with them on there here's one a big ounce and a quarter through this guy down at OHIV but, all right let's see here I'm not ignoring you guys there's my favorite trailer go hog farmer spunk a shad Dude, I like that beetle juice. That is a good color. All right. I did throw these a little bit this spring. Uh, this is the cross eye bladed jig from Z-Man. Uh, that's a good one. That's my number two choice. If I can't throw a jackhammer, I'm going to throw that guy right there. No dung beetle. What's up, Bayou Burner? Let's see, uh, I'm going to go back here and answer some questions. Answer some questions. Uh, let me get that rat to my left. This guy right here. This guy. This is by my buddy Sam over at uh, Narrowgate Baits. Uh, he's on Instagram. Great dude. Uh, he's actually making a beaver bait. It's a, It looks like a beaver and has a big wide beaver tail. Uh, he hand makes these here in Murray. Uh, he does some resin, some wood. But this is one of his very first ones. Uh, this thing wakes really good and listen to it. It's got a nice knock. Uh, but look him up on Instagram, Narrowgate Baits. Um, I might have to get him on a show or show you how he makes his baits. But great guy. Um, makes an awesome rat. And then this rat. Guys, I just got a mail call too today. I forgot. Y'all want to see some crazy rats? Y'all give me just a minute. I'll give me just a minute. Philip Jones in here, lead designer for Six Cents. Why aren't you designing a rat, Philip? Uh, yes, they were made in his garage. Be right back. Oh my. 
my god, I can't get through here. Hotter than who did any hell in here? Oh. All right, okay. I gotta look this guy's name up on Instagram. I'm back, so no, I'm in a carport shed, so no AC. So, this is the guy that sent it to me. Uh, his Instagram name is Orange Room Studio. Orange Room Studio. Um, and he sent me these rats. Check this guy out. This is definitely different. This is looks like a freaking rat. Yeah, look at that guy. A little bluegill pattern. Looks like a, I mean, he's got it down. He's got some detail on that thing. So, not as loud. He's got a knocker. I'm going to throw this in the pool, in the pond, and try to get a little bit of swimming action on this. So that's really cool. And then, uh, check this guy out. Sent me old perp rat up on that perp. Now this is the guy, I, I'm throwing this one. A little nighttime rat action. I think he did a really good job with the ears on here. This one, uh, there's no clear coat on it. It's kind of a matte finish. Got that perp. Got that perp. Yeah. It's got a single joint in here. Uh, really cool looking. I can't wait to throw this and see what kind of action it is. Uh, again, that was... Uh, I, I forgot what's the name. Is. is it called the Reckless Rat? Uh, Orange Room Studio. It's called... I don't know the name, name, name of it. I'm trying to look. It's three ounces and six and a half inches without the tail and all that. So he sent me a DM, said, yo, dude, I'd like to send you a purple rat. And I said, sure, dude, we're getting the rat game strong. Maybe, you know what I might do? If you guys will tune in Saturday night, we'll get a big giveaway going. And I'll put a rat in a giveaway. I got to keep the purple, but y'all can get that bluegill up in there. Ooh, look at those big rats. We need to have a dedicated rat show. I'm running out of places to hang baits. This is getting to be a problem over here. Uh, there's a couple of rats I'd like to get. Uh, I'm looking for OD rat, and I'd like to get a Nez rat as well. So I gotta get the pool clean too. Hella bass is bad. Uh, does Duckett make a bladed jig? No, but he's probably looking at knocking one off. All right, fishing with Gramps. Thanks for joining in, my man. Uh, you'll have to come on stream with me sometime. How many people catch fish on a rat? Uh, I would say there's a big following for rat fishermen. I'm not sure it's a turny bait. Uh, Justin Kerr definitely tried, and he did a really good job. Uh, and people laughed at me in the swim bait group, of course, because, uh, but uh, I said, you know, he may have been throwing that rat to find fish reveal the fish just like a glide bait or whatnot a lot of times guy find fish by throwing a glide and seeing followers and may not have caught that many fish on the rat but he might have been able to go back to the same area seeing fish blow up and he was like hey i can come back here and flip just occur is a hammer and he's been there for a long time so it's not like he's just some new guy that just got into fishing but uh, i think he was throwing a uh, woodrow rat which are really expensive hard to get they're awesome um, yes, Nate, I have noticed that. I think a lot of it is just, uh, you know, it's hard to get stuff right now. What's up, Scott? What's up, man? Um, yeah, I'm glad to be here on a Tuesday night. I could be banging on a window, but we're, we're talking baits here. Yeah, uh, since Duck and Al owns Molex, I guess, uh, he owns the Molex, uh, Bob Rating Jig or whatever they call it.
That was a great pick, Gary. Great pick. You did those scum rock rat scum frog rats were awesome. Ah. Who you here? I had to get me some of these, even though I said they don't buy them on Kentucky Lake anymore. In case I go to Pickwick, I'm going to go back down to Lake Fort Ronnie Kelly. We're going to put to use some 500 DDs in the old Jank Juice. Uh, I know Matt Luna's got a video. I think he caught a couple on the Jank Juice in the C10 or C15. But they do make it in the Crush 500 DD. I had to get them. You know, I, I got to get these just because it's my color, where I throw them or not. Uh couldn't remember if I had one. I ordered a Speed Wake in Jank Juice. I love the Speed Wake. I'm going to tell you a color I really, really like here. And I've seen it, and I really like it in person. I think these are in stock. This is the Speed Wake in Bloody Shad. So you got the little scales. Uh, but it's kind of a, a bone pearl belly, and you got that blue. This is just a very good color. I, I, you could throw this in clear water or wherever. Really like the speed wake, man. Really, really like this. Yeah, dude, everybody tells me on Pickwick that the 500 DD and 300 are the deal. Man, I've not thrown the big M uh, for big cranking, so... Dude, uh, I've got so many guys on Pickwick. Uh, I'd love to go with David Allen, but I feel that there's other guys on YouTube that's already, you know, I don't know how to say this weird, but I don't want to be a bandwagon guy. Like, I don't want to be a streamer that, well, this streamer had this guest, so I got to get him on my channel. Or this guest, I don't, I, want, I don't want to do my own thing. Like, David Allen's cool, nice guy. I've met him before, but if I go to Pickwick, I'm going with my boy Jake Lawrence. Or I may just go with my fish partner. He's been going out and try to do our own thing. I don't want to just ride the coattails of other people. You know what I mean? So, Tony, I know I do not want to put an AC unit in here, okay? Some of us aren't made out of money. But anyway, so that's Bloody Shad, man. That's a really good looking color. Enough said. So. You know, I'm going to do my own thing. Of course, you know, I collaborate with the Six Cents, Six Cents homies anytime they want to uh, or, or do a stream. I'm cool with that, whether it's uh, Matt Luna or Justin Royal or Milliken or any of those guys. But as far as, like, going out there and doing fishing collabs just to get some clout and try to gain s subscribers, I want to do unique things. I want to go to tackle shops, dude, uh, and stuff like that. I think... Um, Retro Bass is doing a great job. Matter of fact, I'm telling him, dude, you're doing what I want to do. Now, now Retro Bass is different where he's like, which I'll respect to a lot. A lot of his stuff is truly retro. His stuff is like 60s and 70s baits. I'm more of an early 90s, late 80s to mid 90s guy. That's the stuff I'm looking for. Stuff that I don't mind throwing and catching fish on. I'm not much into collecting baits that I know that are just collectors. I want to maybe pull a bait out to catch fish. So. But I would love to go to da with David Allen, and if he ever asked, I would. So uh, the big thing that came back in stock from Six Cents, uh, and they should still have these are like some of my favorite swim bait hooks right here. Uh, these are the Weedless Divine swim bait hook with the screw lock. Uh, this is what I put on my wells. This is three quarter ounce, unpainted. It's fine. I swear the fish do not care, and you probably will see in my Lake X video. Uh, other than me being an idiot and trying to boat flip about a five and a half pounder, they work really good. Dude, I really feel Dick Duckett, if I decided to say, you know what, screw it, I'm filling the truck up with gas, I'm going to be gone for a month, I'm going to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States, I think I could make enough content I think the views on YouTube would pay for the trip. You know, maybe stop and do some fishing. I would have to get a sponsor for that. You know what I mean? Because, dude, I'd have to quit my job. Let's be honest. But if I could get a sponsor to put me some money. I need a sponsor from the damn hair, boys. I need some plugs up in this thing. Uh, but uh, I think I could get it to work. 
you know, go up to Pennsylvania, do some, go Susquehanna fishing tackle, go hit up some uh, Port Royal Speedway. I mean, Dick Duckett can go watch him there uh, at Lincoln. Go watch Kyle, Lar Kyle Larson beat up on the posse. Um, my man Danny Dietrich, watch him race, then go through Ohio. Dude, as bad as the fishing is in Ohio, there's a lot of people that like to fish. Uh, outdoors Geek, uh, right now, I'm scrounger head, me, prime time, end of May to end of July. Sneaky time to use it. In the late, in the fall, in shallow water, get you a quarter ounce scrounger head and some of the small flukes and burn it up shallow. They don't see that often. They don't like that quick swimming thing out there. So, I will not start a GoFundMe. That ain't gonna happen. Um, not gonna happen. Um, but, you know, the more people that support the channel and buy the merch, uh, we'll see, but gotta start small. I can always take a three to four day hacienda, maybe just go into Alabama and start at Mark's Outdoors and wake my, work my way north or something. There you go, Blake Hornsby. Actually, if you guys like OnlyFans, uh, my wife is not on there. I do joke about that. Actually, she might be, but I won't tell your name. But I've got a t-shirt idea that I'm probably going to drop this weekend, and it's going to be funny. So, Yep, I don't want no hands out. I don't want no hand out. But I want to bring y'all some baits. So, now... A rig hooks, if you want a screw lock hook, I can make the cheap ones with the do it molds, which is fine. Six cents A rig hooks. I love the packaging. If you're a retail guys, man, you'll love the packaging. Um, what else have I got in here? Oh, check this some. Look at this. Look at this baby bass pattern movement 80X. That's awesome right there. So, what about the bull shed, Tony? What about it? <clears throat> A net with the built-in scale. Huh. That'd be a good idea. Bullshad's a good bait. It's an OG, man. Yeah, I bl yeah the swim bait heads, they are uh, poor in the United States. So, we're, it's one thing you'll notice from six cents. You'll start to notice more and more stuff start coming in the USA. So... Dude, that baby bass pattern movement 80X is pretty wicked. It's pretty dang wicked. Yes, uh, David, I will. Uh, I will do that. When I make the video, which I got to get that stuff up. So it's either put the stuff out now or maybe wait till this fall, winter when it's hard to get fishing content and go ahead and put re-put that out. Dude, me and Casey just killed them. But... I will get all that, and I'll show you exactly how I will rig these and the weight, the weights I put on there. So, um, all right, what else did I get? I mean, I got a lot of swim bait heads. That Texas trip smoked me. So, I will let you know. I got two sizes. I got eighth. Actually, I just got all eighth. There's some more of these weedless swim bait heads, dude. I'm telling you guys, try these. These work great if your head is solid. Some more top water. There's a Dogma 100. So I got two colors. I got uh, Ghost Spanish Pearl 4K Shad. So the Dogma 100 is the smaller one. So if you want to be a little finessey. Dude, that 4K Shad, man, that is just a great color from Six Sense. They've always made this color really good. Ah! Mm. Sharp hooks. Sharp hooks. Got a couple big knockers in there. You're coming to Kentucky Lake to fish? I would go to Pickwick, Tony. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's tough, but... I would fish shallow, and I would fish lay down, so I'd fish a little white white or bluegill swim jig, and I would fish uh, a topwater walking bait, or popping bait, uh, around shade lines and boat, boat docks. Uh, anything that's confidence. I actually um, um, like uh, that Black Magic uh, Splashback 70. That works really good, too. 
Outdoors Geek, looking for a small wake bait. Any suggestions? Yeah, I got one right here if you don't mind paying some money. This is uh this is the Mega Bass LBO. This is a really, really good good wake bait. Listen to this. It's a good small wake bait. Of course, you're looking at spending 20 bucks on this deal, but one cool thing about a wake bait is you're not going to lose them very often. Uh, but the uh, OSP over rev is really good, very similar. Uh, but this is the uh, Mega Bass, uh, I think it's called Burning uh, Burning Shad OBS. But it has this has the LBO in it, which is that transfer system that goes back and forth. Listen, when you cast. That weight transfer goes back there, so it makes this thing cast really good. Uh, let's see what else I got in my wake bait box. If it's not too hard to get to, which means it probably will be on the bottom. I actually have a box dedicated to wakes somewhere here. It's not on the bottom. Woo. All right. We need to have a wake bait discussion show. You want a good wake that doesn't cost a lot of money? Man's baby one minus right here. Uh, put you some heavy mono on. You can wake this thing all day long. You can buy them retail for five bucks. Uh, this is this is not an old one. I do not think this is a newer version. It just says man's on here. And this is the old one here. It says baby minus one on it. Oh, that's a daggum barking spider. Check that guy out. That's an epic Eric special. So kind of a June bug minus one. Great wake bait. You can make it a wake bait. My favorite small wake bait. This guy right here. These are hard to find. Uh, I've got to hook up on this. These are hard to find. Is this is the Lucky Craft GD SSR? It's that Gerald Swindle. It's a little bitty uh, weight bait. They these are hard to find. They're kind of discontinued now. These guys right here, they're the jam. Listen to them. Really, really good wake bait. And to be honest with you, if you want to stay in the cranking style, the KBD 2.5 wake. That's that Tennessee Shad 4.0, man. Look, check out that color, man. This is a really good, good waker. And you can hear it. Very loud, very loud. I've heard the, the new baby minus one's pretty good. So, as far as small wake baits, I oh, might as well just put this one up in, in the box. Here's a Jack of Mikey that's discontinued. So I've got a kind of a wake bait box going in. I also put my ploppers in here just because I really didn't have an, another spot for ploppers. And they're a hybrid bait, I feel. I'm running out of room. I'm running out of room. So we're running out of stuff in this box. I just wanted to go through it here. Something I bought that I normally wouldn't buy. I bought some of these for Bait Jr. These are his own mini 25. Some little, this is their gizzard shad in the mini 25. Look at this guy. Look at this small bait, man. Pond fishing, guys. Creek fishing. I bought these for Bait Jr. Man, these things run really good, by the way. I was very impressed how well they run. So, bought those for Bait Jr. Got the 25 MD, which is a deeper diver one. Another bait bag. It's a couple finesse curves. Uh, here's a bait that doesn't get a lot of love, uh, to be honest with you, from Six Cents. Everyone talks about the Cloud 10, the Cloud 15, the Crush 500. This is the Crush 250 MD, and uh, this thing goes about 10 foot, 
12, 14 pound line. It goes about 10 foot, but it's got that profile of similar of like a, it's similar to the cloud, but it's, it's a lot narrower. It's more like a deep little end style. But man, that gizzard shad color, really like this. This is kind of something I got for maybe cranking some secondary points, uh, stuff like that. Not really a deep diver, but somewhere in between. Uh, I would love to get something like that, Nate, like a 3XD, like a 150 MD would be perfect. You know, a little bit smaller of a body, but this is a great bait. A little bit more finessier than the clouds. Uh, a lot of guys really like this bait. Don't talk about it a whole lot. You see how much narrower that bill is? It's going to have a lot tighter action than like the cloud uh, where it's got that big wide bill. So. Now, this color is Gizzard Shad, uh, Tony. I do not have a riser jack from Fish Arrow. I do know that Depths and DR Depths has a new bait coming out that's very similar to like the DRT Tiny Clash. Uh, the only other thing I got, uh, I got some more splashbacks. I love the splashback 70. Again, that's uh, becoming like my go-to popper right now. Dude, this Spanish bone is wicked. Everybody loves a little bone color. Gotta have that Spanish bone. Like, if you ever get in a pinch, it's like, man, I can't figure out which top water to buy. Whatever's in stock and bone, you buy bone. Man, look at, man, look how, just look at that. Look how good that looks. One thing I love about this, I made a mistake. I had fluorocarbon on my top water rod. Somehow, I got my reels mixed up. And, dude, I was throwing fluoro, and I could still walk this bait amazing. It is one of the best walking popping baits. I found that real soft twitches, you can really make it dart left and right. A little bit stiffer, you would spit. So, me, I've been doing three pops and a stop. And, dude, they've been crushing it. Uh, the fish I caught on Kentucky Lake the other night, um, three pops, stop, three pops, stop. And I was getting bit almost every time. Especially at the little, little late end, so... Yeah, so I like the black one. The only problem with the black one is once it gets really late in the evening, I can't see it. Where's a bone? Uh, and then I got the famous uh, 4K shed. If you guys want to uh, order some Six Sense products, uh, get on their website, use my code BAITMAN. Uh, obviously, the Super Six Sack every month. But uh, I'm going to jump off here. We have been streaming for. I'm hotter than hell, guys. I got to make a thumbnail and everything. It is. We've been on for over two hours now, or an hour at least, uh, hour and 40 minutes, something like that. So we're going to jump off here. So do me a favor. I want you guys to pick a topic for Saturday night. Leave a comment after the video or whatnot. Smash the like, leave a comment. What do you want to talk about Saturday night? Let's talk about some swim baits. What are some swim baits uh, maybe you want to see on the stream that I don't have? If I have to order some stuff from Tackle Warehouse, we'll get it in. Those guys will probably take care of me and get it to me quick. So, anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me on a Tuesday night. I'll leave a comment. Let's get the algorithm going on there. Let's see if I, I might drop another video this week. Depends on how much work I got. But, again, thanks for the support. Not quitting forever. Just went on a break. Um, make sure you use the Tackle Warehouse link. Use that $10 uh, or two-day shipping. Uh, if you can't, and uh, if they don't have it, message Hella Bass and see if they Omni has got it or something. But uh, the best way to support the channel, watch for some new merch dropping. Follow me on Instagram, and uh, we might have a special podcast with Duckett's brother coming this week. So, guys, thanks again. Good to see y'all. I'm sweating. I'm losing weight streaming, so this is good. Uh, 